Dear students, all over the world, people have been part of social unrest, riots, manias, fads, panics, lynchings, religious revivals. Large number of incidents labeled psychic epidemics, collective seizures, group outbursts, mass delusions, crazes have been recorded. Social psychologists terms such as phenomena, mass behavior, relatively spontaneous and unstructured ways of thinking, feeling and acting that develop within a group as a result of interaction among the participants. It is not governed by traditional established norms and hence is not institutionalized. Social movements are somewhat similar but have purposeful direction and a good deal of internal order. Social movement can be called as a more or less persistent organized effort on the part of relatively large number of people to bring about or resist social change. D. Smeltzer's formulation is borrowed from the economist notion of value added. As raw ore, iron can be made into many things. Once converted into thin sheets of steel, uses are limited. Cutting further limits its uses. Each step adds value but also cuts down on other options. Mass behavior is like this. As each successive determinant is added, the range of possible final outcomes is narrow. Crowds and Audience The French sociologist Gustave Lee Bon devoted a whole book to study the nature of crowds. He described how the people in a crowd often think, feel, and act in extreme ways like mom scenes, crowd hysteria, and how they accept or reject ideas uncritically. He contrasted the behavior of people when they are alone with their behavior when they are member of large groups. Floyd Alport 1924 described a crowd as a collection of individuals who are all attending and reacting to some common object, their reactions being of a simple proponent sort and accompanied by strong emotional responses. Crowds and audiences are temporary collection of human beings in contrast to group which are more enduring. While groups have a hierarchic structure, there is no such structure in crowds and audiences. Though there are temporary and though they are without structure, crowds and audiences are of great significance in social life. The crowd is the most transitory and unstable of all social groups. It is an unorganized group. Crowds form quickly and also dissolve quickly as we can see in the marketplace. The crowd differs from the audience in that the participant in an assembly, public meeting or cinema house fall into the predetermined order and are arranged according to some principle of selection. But in a crowd, there is no such order whatever. In between, the audience and the crowd is the gathering of people who assemble to watch a snake charmer or to listen a lecture by a medicine vendor in the marketplace. In such assemblages, there is minimum order, the person will stand around and their focus is on the performer or the vendor. However, in a crowd, there is no definite order at all. People just gather together. Will Graham and Toch 1968 described mass behavior as group behavior which originates spontaneously is relatively unorganized, fairly unpredictable and planeless in its course of development and which depends on interstimulation among the participants. It includes crowd behavior, riots, protests, movements, public rewards, etc. The persons in a crowd may behave in the most noble and heroic manner as well as in the most savage and destructive manner also. It is because of this that a mass behavior may serve as vehicle of social change as in French Revolution or the Satyagraha movements in India under the leadership of Gandhi in 1920, 1930 and 1942 or the Vimochana Samera in Kerala in 1958 which led to the unsetting of the Communist Party rule. In this manner, social unrest and social movements are indicators of historical change. 
they also indicate the breakdown of existing social order this is how study of mass behavior helps in the understanding of the basis of stability in the everyday social world types of crowds darren brown divided the crowds into mobs and audiences as given in the figure you are about to see thus he distinguished between two kinds of crowds a mobs which may be aggressive or escape mobs or acquisitive or expressive mobs and b is audience which may be casual or intentional when there is social unrest protest meetings and procession to express the grievance are organized thus protest meetings or processions are organized crowds they are audience not mobs however a protest meeting may become disorganized when two parties clash or when the police come to disperse the meeting or procession if it is violation of the magistrate order under such circumstances an intentional organized audience becomes an aggressive mob pelting stones at the policemen or setting fire to buses in similar manner an organized audience may become panic mob when fire breaks out in hall or at the meeting place sometimes the mob may also be organized into an audience when the leader comes and appeals to them to calm down and understand the exact situation or problem some features of the crowd the crowd is an aggregation of people generally crowds tend to form in a circle from all sides people come up to see what is happening formation of a circle helps most people to observe the event such a ring will have a structure the speaker or the snake charmer will be in the center there will be some space around him which is free the persons who arrive early tend to form the first circle around this empty space the crowd may be four or five or more deep in concentric circles then there will be a outer boundary the following figure illustrates the structure of the ring there will be considerable movement between the inner boundary the late comers will try to push their way to the inner boundary to get a good view the early comers who have satisfied their curiosity or who lose interest will struggle to move out thus it may be assumed that those who form the inner boundary are more highly motivated than those who are at the periphery secondly the larger the inner space the wider the circle and so the greater the number of people who can witness the event sometimes the ring of admirers may be so close to a celebrity that he is unable to come out of it unless the policeman break the ring and make a pathway boundary maintenance is an important problem in organized collectivities when large crowds are expected the person responsible for the assemblage will plant poles and tie thick cords to demarcate the areas one can see such arrangements being made in tirupati temple where tens of thousands of devotees crowd to go into the temple for darshan the temple authorities draw ropes on either side so that the crowd moves in an orderly fashion thus orderliness is created in a situation which would otherwise be chaotic similar arrangements are made when the prime minister visits the various parts of the country the properties of the crowd are continually changing so that a person who desires to stand on the fringe may find himself at the center of speedily increasing crowd a person may wish to remain stationary but the flow of the crowd may make him move in the street as milgram and toch right the choices made by a plurality of others in inter stimulation create altered conditions for him that independent of his intentions in turn his response to the conditions creates constraints and pressures for others another major feature of a crowd activity is differential participation though it is assumed that a crowd is generally homogeneously acting careful scrutiny will reveal that while a good proportion may be attending to the speaker some others will be engaged in private conversation and other activities those who come as onlookers may be engulfed in the crowd but they may not be interested in the issue 
Polarization is another feature. When all or most of the members of a group are facing one object, there is attention towards it. This gives unity to the group. When the speaker is able to maintain the attention of the group, there is polarization. Similarly, when the actors on the stage are able to sustain the attention of the group, there is polarization. Polarization is also related to the structure of the group. Those near the center will be more highly polarized than those at the periphery. When there is no polarization at all, then the persons form a mere assemblage. There are no more a crowd. A crowd is distinguished from a mere aggregate because of some common interest or purpose which leads to polarization. When polarization diminishes, the crowd is broken up. When individuals lose interest, they disengage themselves and move on. A typical example of lack of polarization is when people gather to hear music in a park on a Sunday evening. Some people may listen to some items with interest, but generally they will be moving around, conversing, buying eatables and so on. When the songs are very popular and when the musicians are very popular, there may be some polarization. The number of people within a specified space defines the density of crowd. When loudspeakers are made available, the density decreases because people can stand far from the speaker and yet listen clearly. Hall 1966 asserts that one of the factors affecting density of crowd is how people respond to jostling and showing and the touch of the strangers. If people like being touched by strangers or do not mind it, then the density will be high. If people do not like being touched by the strangers, the density of the crowd will be less. Hall also suggests that there may be cultural variations. He writes, the Japanese and Arabs have much higher tolerance for crowding in public spaces and in conveyance than do Americans and Northern Europeans. There is no doubt that Indians as a whole have a high tolerance for crowding in public spaces. There will be dense crowds both at religious festivals and at political meetings and demonstrations. Kumbhamila crowds, Dashra crowds and Puja crowds are conspicuous for their high density going up even to hundreds of thousands. Another index of the Indian response to jostling and showing is the overcrowding of houses and railway carriages. They are always packed. Crowd size Milgram and Torch report that the producers of television program in Rome took the permission of the local authorities and staged an automobile accident in a relatively empty street by making two cars crash against each other. Soon a crowd began to form around the scene of accident, but the maximum crowd was around 100 arranged in a circle around the cars. It ceased to grow further. This shows that a car accident will collect only a limited crowd. Also, the size of the accident crowd will be limited by the population density in the area and the time of accident. Neil Smetzer 1963 discusses the general conditions of the crowd formation. Elias Canetti 1962 conducted a field experiment to examine the role of participating groups of varying numbers in crowd formation. Participating groups made up of 1, 2, 3, 5, 10 and 15 were placed in a New York City street with heavy pedestrian flow. The members of the group performed a clearly observable action like looking up at a window of a skyscraper and holding the pose for one minute. Each condition was replicated five times. It was found that above 40% of the passerby joined one person gazing at the window, about 60% when there were two or three persons and around 80% of the passerby for groups of five and more. Thus, any increase above five persons in the participating group did not have any further significant increase in crowd formation. With the increase in the participating group, there is an increase in the proportion of onlookers up to a point who join. One of the important tasks of the newspaper reporters is to estimate the size of the crowd when they write about an incident. Studies show that 
This estimate can be actually based on the measurement of the area. The minimum space for a person will be around 2 square feet. Therefore, the total number of people can be worked out on the basis of actual area in which the crowd is gathered. Many years back, Lee Bon and Floyd Alport suggested that one of the factors leading to crowd behavior is anonymity. When the crowd is large, no person can single out and held responsible for his actions. This argument assumes that an individual has some antisocial tendencies which are normally held under check by public opinion or fear of legal or social consequences but which are let loose in a group since it provides anonymity. Anyway, there is no doubt that the aim of the police is to identify the persons in a crowd to fix their responsibility. It is possible that in this situation, innocent persons who are in the scene may be held responsible. There is also another aspect to the problem. When a crowd gathers and when conditions are favorable for rioting, not only the police come to prevent the violence, but it's also possible that many persons who are in no way connected with the problem may use the opportunity to join the crowd and get some excitement by including in riotous behavior. It is possible that this often happens when student crowds are formed to agitate for something. Though the students themselves may not desire to engage in violence and destruction, the unruly elements may take advantage of the situation. But this means students should not provide the opportunity for the rowdies to get in. The composition of the crowds. What are the characteristics of the people who make up crowds? According to Lee Bon, crowds are composed of criminals, vagrants, social misfits, etc. However, historical studies of French Revolution 1789 show that the 662 persons reported to have been killed in storming the brass tide and had regular places of residences and settled occupations. There is no doubt that the Satyagrahis under the leadership of Gandhi who revolted against the British rule and who were submitted to lati charge, shooting, etc. were people of character who had been trained in the principles of Satyagraha. However, it is true that a large proportion of a crowd consists of illiterate, unskilled, unemployed people since that is a demographic feature in India. About 75% or more of the people belongs to this category in India today. So it is little wonder if they also constitute the majority in any crowd except when the crowds are formed by students or factory laborers or government employees who are on strike. Another feature of the crowd is its changing composition. Just as the stream is the same but the water flowing changes, similarly crowd may persist but the individuals composing it keeps on changing except for the small core of people committed to cause or issue. The ruffians in the area may join when the crowd becomes riotous so that they can take advantage of the situation and turn the attention of the crowd to looting. The composition of the crowd may also determine the form of collective behavior that arises. For example, when the crowd consists of a good number of women, it may not break off into violence. Also, the police who come to check the activities of the crowd may not resort to lati charge, tear gas, etc. when there are many women in the crowd. Brown 1954 has enumerated the various categories of persons who compose a mob in terms of their readiness to violate conventional behavior. There may be lawless persons for whom violent behavior is not completely discontinuous with their normal life. There may be highly suggestible persons who readily succumb the hypnotic influence of the father surrogates, the leaders. There may be those who lower thresholds for conventional behavior and who can readily drop off conventional behavior if the situation makes it possible. Such individuals may take advantage of the loss of responsibility through anonymity and because of the creation of an impression of universality may become active in the mob situation. Because of anonymity that have no fear of being identified, because of the impression of the universality, they feel that they must also join the writing since 
everybody is writers. Next, there are the supportive individuals. They may not like to indulge in mob action, but they are ready to support them, to encourage them. Finally, there are those who may actively resist any mob violence and who may even risk their lives by condemning the unruly members. Information flow in the crowds. Rumor. Rumors may precede as well as succeed mob behavior. There are several cases on record when rumors spread that some child is kidnapped, that some member of the group has been taken into custody by the police and ill-treated or even murdered in the police station. The spread of these rumors may lead to the formation of crowds and violent behavior. If it is a case of rumors about kidnapping of a children, any stranger in the locality may be set upon. If it is a case of maltreatment of a citizen by the police, the mob may attack the police station. Rumors may also spread after the riot. It may be rumored that the police shot down a number of people. This may lead to protest meetings the next day. Rumors arise when there is an ambiguous situation. Rumors is an attempt to restructure the situation by explaining what may have happened. Alport and Postman 1947 asserted that the intensity of rumor and the rapidity with which it spreads is a function of interest in the matter being transmitted and the ambiguity. Ambiguity arises when there is an incomplete information or when the information cannot be readily verified. They also showed that rumors become shorter, more concise and more easily grasped. Rumors also become sharpened with relatively few details. These features enable the rumors to be grasped easily. They are spread quickly because of the interest in the matter. They may affect them personally. It is assumed that rumors will not spread if the correct information is provided. This is a wrong assumption. Rumors spread because of the interest in the situation and the eagerness of the people to know something about it. Secondly, it is assumed that rumors are inflammatory while facts are not. The facts by themselves may provoke the aggressiveness of the group. Factual information may stop the rumors which are not based on facts, but knowledge of the facts is no guarantee against aggressiveness and mob action. Conclusion The term mass behavior refers to social process and events which do not reflect existing social structure, that is, laws, conventions and institutions, but which emerges in a spontaneous way. Mass behavior might also be defined as action which is neither confirming in which actors follow prevailing norms nor deviant in which actors violate those norms. Mass behavior, a third form of action, takes place when norms are absent or unclear or when they contradict each other. Scholars have devoted far or less attention to mass behavior than they have to either conformity or deviance. Examples of mass behavior include religious revival meetings, a panic in a burning theater, a sudden widespread interest in a website or clothing item, a collective social movement to improve the environment, example, Greenpeace or the rapid spread of rumors. These diverse actions fall within the area sociologists call mass behavior. Mass behavior differs from group behavior in three ways. Mass behavior involves limited and short-lived social interaction while groups tend to remain together longer. Mass behavior has no clear social boundaries. Anyone can be a member of the collective while group membership is usually more discriminating. Mass behavior generates weak and unconventional norms while groups tend to have stronger and more conventional norms. Traditionally, mass behavior in sociology includes four forms, the crowd, the public, the mass and the social movement. Debate over what should be included under the label of mass behavior among sociologists today often included are additional behaviors like 
rumors, riots, trends and facts.